So these stretches and exercises for writers can really be great for anybody working at a desk. A lot of times you end up getting in one position and then bringing your head forward. My sister, who is a writer, talks about a lot of times when she's doing research, um, she goes down that rabbit hole, four hours later she realizes she's in the same position. So one of my favorite stretches exercises is a chin tug. So chin tug for me is not going down, that's a different exercise, but it's actually tucking your chin back and in. It that helps reset all of those muscles, especially when you're kind of shrimping forward and all those muscles get fatigued and overstretched. So all I like to do um, just to help do a chin tuck if you haven't done it before, is just place your finger on your chin, keep your chin in that neutral kind of position, so not down, not up, and you're just pulling back, almost like if there's a wall behind you, you're just trying to take your head towards that wall. Hold it for about three to five seconds and then relax. And a lot of times you'll end up having a little bit of space in between and that's just resetting those muscles. Sometimes if you haven't done a chin tuck before, they can be a little painful. So don't feel like you have to force it. You're just going back, you know, until you're comfortable Again, holding it there three to five seconds and then relax. And you can do that a couple times. Um, you can do them you know, several times while you're sitting there, you know, maybe once every hour or so. It's a nice way to just kind of reset those neck muscles, um, especially a lot of times too, if you get tension headaches. So then the next one is just gonna be an upper trap stretch. Upper trap stretch, um, those muscles, again, kind of up in that neck area, especially for riders, they get really irritated, really tight. They hold a lot of stress in there. Um, and so the way I like to do an upper trap stretch is uh, I just sit on the hand of the side that I wanna stretch. And that just keeps my shoulder down. It gives me a better stretch. You don't have to do that, but I like to do that because again, I feel like it gives you a little bit better stretch because it holds that shoulder down. Take your other hand, just kind of bring it up over your head where your fingers are kind of touching your ear a little bit and then just gently pull over the, to the side. You're not rotating your head on this one. You can for some stretches, but for this specific one, I like just kind of going over to the side. This is gonna be a full stretch, so you're just holding it for 30 seconds. Again, if you just wanna relax your hand, I'm still feeling a stretch. I'm not feeling quite the same amount of stretch, but I'm still feeling a stretch. 30 seconds, then switch over to the other side. If you don't really wanna sit on your hand, you can put it behind your back as well. You can also itch your back if you want to, like Remy. Um, but again, then just finger kind of on that ear over this way. I'm getting a nice stretch through there, through that upper uh, trap area. And again, holding that for 30 seconds. Great stretch. Do that three times on each side, and then you can relax again like Remy. So then the next one is an upper trap stretch, or excuse me, we just did that one, is a levator scapulae stretch. This one is really um, when people hold a lot of stress, they kind of bring up their shoulders like this, and that is really overworking that levator scapulae muscle. So that's the one that it's, it holds onto your scapula or your shoulder blade, and it goes all the way up into the neck area. So again, with the hand placement, yeah, we'll do this hand placement. For this side that I'm stretching, yeah, I'm gonna bring my elbow up. Again, sometimes this is a little uncomfortable for people, so you can put it behind your back. I just like to put it up this way because that's the way that I learned it. Then you're gonna take your other hand and stop your puppy from licking their paw and bring it up and over almost like a helmet um, to the back of your head. And then you're gonna turn your head just a little bit to a 45 degree angle and then pull almost like you're trying to take your nose into your armpit and then stretch it out like Callie. So I'm coming down this way and I'm feeling a great stretch right through there. And again, this is a full stretch. So I'm holding it for that 30 seconds and then coming up and then switching sides. So again, if you if this is too uncomfortable, you can put your hand behind your back or you can just put it down to the side. Um, but again, I feel like this is kind of pushing that shoulder blade down so it's gonna give you a better stretch. And then coming up and over, tucking that nose in towards the armpit about that 45 degree angle, getting that really nice stretch. 30 seconds, three times on each side. 
So then we're gonna go into the chest area or the thoracic area just a little bit um, and then get some, some motions here. A uh, little bit kind of a rotation, so the chest and the trunk area. And so it's just like it sounds again, trunk rotation. So with this one, you're just kind of rotating to one side. So I'm getting that stretch through that chest, thoracic area and into the lower back. Um, I like to take the opposite hand and just place it on the opposite leg over there. You can put this one here you can just place it here. I find if you put it a little bit behind you, you're going to get an extra stretch. Um, same thing, just a 30 second hold if you can comfortably hold it that way and then rotate to the opposite side and then just get that stretch in there. So same thing, full stretch if you have time, three times on each side. If you don't have time for that full 30 seconds, three times on each side, make sure you're doing the 30 seconds. So if you just do one on each side, that's fine. But that 30 seconds is really important to get that full stretch in there. So I'm gonna move over to the side now just to show you a couple other things. Another great one um, for the upper back or the thoracic area, especially when you're that writer, you hear the shrimp, people talk about the shrimp. You're really, again, kind of overstretching those muscles, um, making those uh, front chest muscles, those pec muscles uh, tight, and then so then it pulls those shoulders forward. So just a simple, we call it a thoracic extension. Um, you can put your hands up here and just kind of lean back this way. If you're at a chair and it has a low back height, it's great to kind of lean over that chair. That gives you a nice stretch. But you can see I don't need that, especially if you've got a long back, just scoot to the front of your um, chair and then you can get that nice stretch. So again, this would be 30 seconds if you can comfortably hold it there. Uh, if you're really tight, it might be a little uncomfortable. Come back and then again, do that three times. Then to kind of stretch the lower back, this is a, a great one. I just call it um, a seated roll down or a trunk roll down. This is great to kind of get the segments of your back that have been just kind of in the same spot for a while worked out. And it's just like it sounds, you're kind of rolling your body down. Try and go one segment at a time if you can. Kind of um, spread your feet out a little bit because you're just gonna kind of roll down in between. So I'm just rolling down until I can touch the ground. Now, if you're really tight in there, you might not be able to, to touch the ground, um, but you really kind of want to be relaxed and let it hang. So if you can't uh, put your feet or put your hands all the way down on the floor, that's okay. Um, but just kind of hang there and again, let it not stretch out. 30 seconds is good. You don't necessarily have to hold this one for 30 seconds, but then roll back up. Almost think about one segment at a time. You don't have to stop at each segment, but it's a really nice way to kind of roll down and come back up. You can do those a couple times as well. You don't have to do a specific amount of time but getting that stretch in there. If you wanna hold it for the full 30 seconds, you can, um, but again, you don't have to. And then uh, a lot of times the wrists and the hands and the fingers, uh, especially if you're typing a lot, uh, really get tired and worn out. The muscles in the wrist come all the way up to your elbow. You've got your extensors and you've got your flexors. So a nice one to do uh, is just what we call a prayer stretch. So you're just gonna put your hands together and then bring it down and bring Bring your elbows out this way. So I'm getting a nice stretch here. A lot of times um, people who work on the computer a lot might get something like carpal tunnel syndrome. This is stretching that carpal tunnel area out. And so this is a really nice, easy stretch to do. You can you know, stretch both sides at the same time. So it's a really good stretch, especially if you're you know, kind of resting your palms on your keyboard area and you get pressure in that carpal tunnel area. So again, 30 seconds, that nice 30 second hold, you can relax, shake them out a little bit, and then ideally do that three times. Once you get that area stretched out, then a lot of times the wrist extensors on the outside um, get a little tired uh, and they need stretching as well. So then you're just kind of doing the opposite motion. Um, so this time with your hand uh, and your arm straight out, you're just gonna pull down to get that stretch. Now I'm getting that nice stretch up in here. Uh, a lot of times those muscles get really tight because you might be in that slight extended position for a long time when you're working on the computer if you're not in that neutral position. So you wanna stretch those back out. If my fingers are straight down, I get a little bit of a stretch. I can get more by pushing on it, but if I curl my fingers in, even without pushing on it, I can feel that stretch right there. So I'm getting that nice, good stretch in there. Again, holding for 30 seconds, 
switching sides, fingers down if you're already feeling a lot, if you want more of a stretch curling in. If you wanna do them both at the same time, you can kind of go up against a wall and then just push gently into the wall with um, the back of your hands and you'll get a nice stretch in there. And then also with your fingers, if you're you know, typing a lot and doing a lot of research and, and um, typing things into the computer, really just keeping those tendons moving because they might just kind of be in one little position going up and down a little bit. So just doing some uh, finger tendon glides, you can do them with both hands at the same time or one, but you're just putting your hand kind of and wrist in a neutral position, and then you're curling down one segment of a time at a time with your fingers. So you're curling down like that and then rolling back up, really extending when you come back up, curling down, and then coming back up. So again, if you wanna do both sides at the same time, take a little break, curling down, pause a little bit at the curl, and then again, come back up and really extend those fingers out. And that just keeps those tendons moving or gliding to keep everything nice and loosened up. So that's kind of working from neck to back to your um, hands and arms as well, where writers and people just working at a desk all day in general can really benefit from doing these stretches and exercises. If you'd like to help support my channel, click on the link up there. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking down by Remy. And remember, be safe, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.